Bioshock Game Review. You are a pilot crashing in a plane over the ocean somewhere. You find the entrance to an anomaly, a city that you didn't know was going to be there. The city of Rapture. It's an underwater city built in the 60s by the smartest scientists and the best artists from the time who wanted to escape the control of government, of social rules. In Rapture, this utopian city, anyone can alter themselves using plasmids, these genetic enhancements. Most of the population of Rapture have now gone insane. The splicers roam the street, heavily altered former inhabitants. And you also find yourself encountering little sisters, these young girls with a radioactive glow in their eyes, a twinkle in their eye, and in order to get through Rapture safely, you will need to use plasmids yourself, and the best way to gain real access to those is confronting these little sisters. And then you can either kill them for a large quantity of the so-called Adam, yes, the biblical references in this aren't exactly subtle, Eve is the energy with which you use plasmids. You can either kill them or you can save them and you'll get a smaller amount of Adam, but there's a doctor who promises you that she will reward you if you save them rather than kill them. Add to that, that these little sisters, you don't just walk up to them and that's it. They're of course quite frail and they have to be protected against splicers and, you know, strange dangers that might enter the City of Rapture. So, they each have a so-called Big Daddy assigned to them. The Big Daddy is already iconic and was... I believe before the game actually came out, and it's not difficult to see why. He just looks badass. It's just that simple. Fighting these big daddies is some of the most fun you'll have in this game, or at least it was to me. The hacking system is also quite fun. It's basically a game of redirect the fluid flow using pipes. and you definitely cannot complain that there is not enough hacking. And at the same time, it doesn't particularly force you to hack. It just, it gets you some advantages to hack. But you don't have to do it much at all. I'm not entirely sure if you have to do it at all. You can also yourself choose what plasmids you're going to carry. You only have six active slots and you can find at least twice that amount, I would say, overall. Maybe I'm a little off, but anyway. So while you can find them pretty easily, you do have to choose because you can't just, you know, switch back and forth. There are these machines where you switch which ones you're actively using and which ones are just stored in these machines. And that's almost it as far as the real freedom and where this differs from your average first-person shooter goes. True, you can explore whenever the radio voices shut up and let you do so. What is with this 
recent trend of hand-holding. It happened in Max Payne 2 as well, you know. If you don't do what you're supposed to do to progress for just a couple of minutes, they'll, you know, say, oh, you have to do this. Yes, I know. I was, you know, looking for ammo or whatever. I was having a little fun. Is that allowed? It's a video game. Anyway, there are some other choices, but the game takes away so many of them. For those who don't already know, this is a sequel in spirit to System Shock 2, a game chock full of choices. And this one just eliminates so many of them. But that's for another video. The weapons are a wrench, a revolver, a shotgun, a tommy gun, a so-called chemical thrower, flamethrower, and it can also use liquid nitrogen and electric gel, a crossbow, and a grenade launcher. I believe that's it. Also, I just, I have to say this about the guns. If you were reloading a weapon, would you do it roughly like this? I'm not kidding, that's really not me overdoing it, that's me acting out essentially what it looks like when you reload a gun. They just do these massive movements that really seem unnecessary. I get that they may be too enhance the challenge, which they really didn't particularly succeed in. It was incredibly easy in the game. But, yes, have them reload relatively slowly. Have it take you know, one or two full seconds to reload a weapon. That's cool. But don't make it look that silly. Just, I don't know, add more details to it or something. Don't drag it out like that. It just looks dumb. The Perhaps this is a good time to, in general, just deal with the look. The, the time period that this city supposedly started in, I guess, helped dictate the choice of Art Deco. I don't have a problem with that as such, but the game is supposed to be creepy, and this just kind of really counteracts it. it. I get, maybe they were going for the Sand Hill thing, you know, like, almost quaint, but it's just not quite. I just don't think they got there. I, I do think that it is moderately threatening, the way you come across, come across these places where the water from the sea is literally pouring into rapture, you know, and you, you know, you see there's got to be a little crack in the pipe above you or the ceiling, and it's just pouring down with water, and it's just like you, you have this feeling that you cannot stay in rapture for too long, or you will just, you know, be crushed under debris or drown or something. That works. But the Art Deco, the cartoonish look of... Vending machines have a clown on them. If you want to buy ammo, the machine has, like, a Mexican bandit on it from the Wild West or something. And it's just... I don't think it worked. I could see it maybe working in a different game or if they had approached it differently. But just a lot of the game, at least to me, was not creepy. I will say that the little sisters are definitely creepy, and the things they say, they refer to the big daddy as Mr. Bubbles, and the things they say are basically like that of a little girl, but their voice is slightly off, and just, it's because what they say, you understand it, they don't realize that there's something just really sick about what they're doing. And that does sometimes work. When the game throws really disturbing content at you, it does work pretty well. About the Little Sisters, though, basically the reason you are, you know, getting Adam from them is that they use these large syringes to harvest 
this atom from dead splicers. You know, they're like, I don't know, the recycling community of Rapture. So you have to, you know, either kill or save these girls to get their atom. One question, why do we not just grab the syringe and use it ourselves? That seems like it would work so much better than every time you kill one of the splicers, you can just harvest it yourself, you know, cut out the middle sister. I don't know, maybe this is explained somewhere, but I sure didn't catch it. And I'm not saying that it would have been a better game if you could harvest it directly yourself. Obviously not. It is a great feature that they have it, but it's unfortunate if it really isn't explained properly. The graphics are fantastic, in spite of the many glitches. Water, for example, obviously, looks amazing. It kind of has to when it's all around, but they really really did a good job on it. Fire looks pretty good. Smoke looks good also. There is some... Now the levels are linear, but there is some measure of this world running by itself. This is mostly seen in the Big Daddies and the Little Sisters, because they genuinely do just go about their business if you don't bother them. The Splicers, I've heard that they supposedly also just wander around, but the moment you see one or they see you, it's a fight. Big Daddies don't really care. If you get in their way, they're gonna throw you away, you know, bitch slap you. But if you don't do that or you don't attack them, they're not going to care. You're just, you're there. It's, the, you know, they don't care. And trust me, you'll know when you've gotten one dead set on taking you out. They don't forget. They're, they're like elephants with glowy diving helmets on. The voice acting is quite good, and... I don't know, some of the characters aren't bad. You pick up audio logs to piece together basically what happened. I didn't find them as interesting as I really think they should have been and as the ones of System Shock 2 were, but I do think that they did a pretty good job of exploring the philosophy. You know, it's... I mean, the whole point of utopia is we can't reach it. There's no way that we could actually reach and maintain an idealistic state of affairs. Whenever someone pursues something like that, it goes horribly, horribly wrong. And Rapture is no different. I'm not going to give away what happened, what made it go so horribly wrong here, because, you know, it's revealed over the course of the game. And there is a you know, a proper exploration of... I'm told it's Ayn Rand, I think that's how I pronounce it. I haven't actually read the book Atlas Shrugged, but as far as I understand, you know, it's individualism taken to its extreme, you know, everyone out for themselves. And this game kind of explores that, you know, Rapture is built on that ideal and, you know, the, story, the, the game tells the story, somewhat, of what happened with that. Near the end, the game has several twists, and some of them are cool, but at least one of them is too little and far too late. We just don't care. I certainly didn't care. Honestly, for the last several hours of playing this game, I was just so sick of it and just really wanted to get to the end so that I could review it and, you know, see the ending. The ending was pretty good. There are like three, and the ending I got, it was slightly preachy, but it did have a point. It was also, I think, the only time the game actually engaged in full-on 
animated cutscenes. Everything else in, is in engine, and I can't blame them because it's a mighty good engine. The game just never really immersed me. Not the way the last several games I played did, you know, Kane and Lynch, Assassin's Creed, even Medal of Honor. Just, yes, the original, the 1998 version on the PlayStation. At its core, this game is just a first-person shooter, and it's just not that good of one. I can think of plenty of first-person shooters I'd rather play than this one. One thing that is good about this is that it puts some limitations some on some things that were not limited in, for example, System Shock 2. There's a very strict limitation on ammo, for example. You cannot carry very much ammo, at least for most guns. It seemed like you could carry plenty for, for example, the Tommy gun. But, you know, and the same with money. You can't carry however much you want. There's a certain limit, and then you just can't pick up more until you spend some of it. I do still think that System Shock 2 did it better with just not having very much ammo and you really having to search for it. I just... the game is too streamlined. I gotta say, it, it isn't the worst. There is still some sense of risk, especially when fighting big daddies. And there is still some freedom because while you can make almost any choice, which I think is a bit too much, I think your choices should have more consequences, and this you can just, you can switch what you want to use, you know, every so often, and thus get to use everything, instead of having to decide early on, okay, am I going to go this path or this other path? Anyway, the game does offer some freedom in that regard. Every weapon seems to have almost every type of ammo covered. I get, you know, making a weapon capable of fighting several types of enemies specifically, but when you're giving, I mean, a good solid half of the weapons have fire or ammo and freezing ammo in addition to regular ammo. I don't know, it's just, and add to that, you know, among your plasmids are the abilities to set on fire and to freeze. So what's the point? Why have the exact same attacks over and over? If you can't think of you know, interesting new ammo types or such. You know, just don't make so many different ammo types. I think that more or less covers it. Yes, so that was my review of Bioshock the game. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.